Hello peoples, welcome back to another video for Brawler's Guild. Today I'm doing rank 5 fights 3 and 4. Last time I did Threk U and Razor Grin. Let's see what's going on in here. Hey Blinktron! 3000. Fun fight. Looks like this guy knows what he's doing. Anyways, well before I begin, just want to say if anybody of you wants to see any fights done with a certain class or spec, or any fight done sooner than I'm uploading these videos, feel free to request so in the comments. Uh, well, I'm not sure what rank 5, fight 3, and 4 are. I probably have seen them already. If they've been in the Brawler's Guild previously, then there's no need to worry. But if they're not, if they're brand new to this season of Brawler's Guild, then, well, I've probably seen it, but I haven't actually fought against that opponent. Looks like there's a lineup, so I guess I'll queue up right away. Sign me up. And I got my flasks and stuff ready, because I've been... Reaching and rage timers. Okay then, let us skip ahead until it's my turn and see what we've got. Well, that didn't take too long. My turn is up next. Uh, not sure who I'm up against. Rank 5, fight 3, but let's hope I can do well. Maybe one shot this. Okay, uh, I think I'll enter stealth to start with. We have. Oh shoot, these guys. The Leopard Gnome Quintet. Okay, so these are... An I better dodge all of them. Uh-huh. And maybe I should go with... Actually, no. Well, it's hard to explain the fight while I'm doing this. I'm just trying to dot them all up and use Phantom Knives for maximum combo point generation. And to maintain my dot stacks. Dot stacks? My rupture on each one of them. Because they all have to die, well, at, by the end of it. And I've seen people get close to the, uh, what is it? The enrage timer? In, I guess that's what you call it. You know, the time you have until you have to beat them. So yeah, it's pretty easy. Area of effect attacks extremely powerful on these guys. So they start out and they all have different levels of health. And what you want to do is start by killing the one with the lowest amount of health so that then you will have more time taking less damage from the rest of them, if that makes any sense. Should be finishing up pretty soon. Okay, next. Looks like Wheezy has a lot of health left. Better start working on him. There we go. And my leeching poison is doing very good in keeping me up. Oh shoot. Uh, the fire's coming. I gotta hurry up. Well, I guess next time I can pop a potion. No, I don't smell smoke. Shush. I'm trying to win. I should be able to win if this hurries up. Yes, there we go. Magical procs. Okay, so if I popped a potion there... It definitely would have helped. Alright, so the Leopard Gnome Quintet, uh, Sleazy, Fleazy, Wheezy, Greasy, whatever their names are. It's like the Seven Dwarves, but Leopard Gnomes. So they all start with certain levels of health. What you want to do is kill the one that's closest to dying. So then you have more time taking damage from less of them. Because when they attack you with a melee strike, they apply a stacking damage over time debuff, but actually, I'm pretty sure when I saw someone else do this, my actions were up to me, when I saw someone else do this, the damage over time was pretty low, even at high stacks. Melee Leprous Spew, 500 nature damage every second stacks to 20. 500 nature damage is not a lot in this expansion. It's nothing, really. 500 times 20, what is that? Uh, I can't math right now. And I think, I haven't seen anybody do it in this season, but if you root them, let's say a mage uses Frost Nova, they can free themselves and run over to you quickly. So roots can kind of help you, kind of help out, but only for a little while. Might want to queue up for the next one. That is pretty much it. Well, area of effect attacks work wonders because you can deal damage to all of them at once. Also, multi-dotting, as I was trying to do there. 
Uh, you don't have to stand anywhere specific, run, or use the arena in any way, unless you prefer to kite for some reason. I think that's it. There was really no need to use Leeching Poison, and not Crippling Poison, because I'm a melee and I want to stay in range to deal damage to them, and all kinds of details like that. Anyways, let's watch the rest of these fights, and skip ahead to when I fight rank 5, fight 4. Hooray, another winner. Hopefully, I don't uh, break the winning streak, whatever that means. Okay, my turn. Rank 5 fight 4 is somebody. Maybe I should... I'll just pop a potion because... Black Mange. Oh, he's easy. He's a new one. But I've not had the pleasure of fighting against him. So basically, he got lines of gunpowder traveling to cannons at that side of the room. You can obviously see it. And once they fire... Well, it's pretty much a one-shot. You're dead. So you obviously don't want to stand in shoot cannon fire when it goes off. And the mistake I made there was, what I was trying to do was step into the line of a cannon after it fired, and then step into an adjacent line, because they seem to be alternating rather evenly at uh, the same rate. But the mistake was that sometimes the gunpowder fuses, they burn at different rates. Sometimes I go faster, sometimes slower. So that's what caught me off guard there. I thought I, could, I was safe to just move back and forth when one fired and the other one was, you know, pretty much safe to stand in for a while. Uh, other than that, Black Mage himself just melees you. He has charge. Or charge. Yar. Like a pirate. Because he's a pirate. And I'm not sure if that really does anything. He just jumps behind you. I don't know, it doesn't stun or anything? I haven't seen anything. Anything like significant that it does. Maybe it's just changed where he is. Maybe it's just supposed to throw you off in some way. Anyways, I have five fights ahead of me. So I'll just... Ooh, that's a new fight. So I'll just skip ahead to Black Mange once again and give it another try. Okay, now this line again. See, a lot of this has to do with staying in the safe spot. Otherwise, well, there's nothing else to it. Okay, refresh. Rupture. Come on, where's my line? There it is. Oh, wait, this one's moving super fast. Uh, Cloak of Shadow, it's evasion. Shoot. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, uh, well, let's try it again. You know, it's probably better to fight closer to the cannons because that way you can have better eye on when they fire and when you want to move. Okay, moving to this one. It's going to be close. What the heck? Could have sworn the one on the right was going to fire first. You know, I guess the one I was standing in was burning faster and I didn't quite catch it. That's the thing, I guess, when you're standing close to the canyons. You're you don't have quite as wide a field of view, and you can't see the fuses burning quicker, if they are, until they're really close to the cannons. Alright, uh, well, nothing to do but try again. Just really, go away, it's my turn, I can't afford to be losing health. Well, actually it doesn't really matter on <laughs> Black Mage, I just get one shot by cannons. Okay, my turn is up again, I died once again already. Hopefully I can watch the cannons this time, and I can't enter stealth. Potion, cheap shot, maybe that was completely unnecessary. But I have to keep a very, very close eye on the cannons. And as soon as one fires, I can move into the next one. Charge. Left one's going to go first. Move into it. Okay. We will reposition ourselves on Black Mage. That one just fired. We fly Garrote. And the one on the right is going to fire first. Look how fast it is. Jeez. That's why you got to watch this stuff all the time. Okay, the one on the left just fired. Move into it. Move back up. Do this. There we go. Just keeping the camera facing towards the cannons. Now the one on the right is going to fire first. So I'll move into that as soon as it does. There we go. 
And then the one on the left, move into that once that's done. Okay, there that goes. Move Black Mage up here. Is my potions up again? I don't know what King's Bane is. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen here? Okay, I can move into here, that's fine. Move back here safely. Okay. Sometimes both lines that you're jumping between might not be safe. So you'll have to find another way out. Okay, that's good. Potions up again. Okay, move back into here. Doing good. He's almost dead. Can move into here. Fight's almost over, and I am almost dead if I don't watch the gunpowder trails. Uh, I'm gonna move into this one. Yeah, those two went off pretty much the same time. Am I gonna win? I hope so. That one's going fast. There we go. Yes. Great. See, Black Mage doesn't do pretty much anything at all. He just does charge, which is doesn't even do damage. He he jumps through you or jumps behind you. It does nothing. All it is meant to do is throw you off and disorient you and keep your focus away from the cannons where it should be. Well, this has been rank five fights three and four. The first one against the Leopard Gnome Quintet. I have their names here. It is Queasy, Fleazy, Greasy, Sleazy, and Queasy. They cast Leprous Spew, which uh, I don't think it's applied with melee hits, but it's uh, damage over time, which should... Well, should be considered, but it's so low, I don't think it was actually tuned properly. Anyways, if it was tuned properly, you would have to kill the one that's lowest on health first, so that the dot one stacks so fast, so high, so high, so quickly, and then work your way down the line as to which one has the next lowest health and the next lowest, and so on. Also, you probably just want an area of effect fest the whole thing and use like single target finish moves and whatever on uh, I don't know, just one of them. You can also take advantage of stuff like Phantom Knives combo points, Frost Mage, Frozen Orb, and Blizzard, uh, things like that. Uh, rank 5, Fight 4, Black Mage, pain in the butt if you ask me. Uh, the whole back line of the arena is lined with cannons. They will fire cannonballs towards you that deal 11 million damage if you're standing in front of one. You can tell if it's about to go off if the line of gunpowder reaches it. And sometimes you have to jump into a, another line of gunpowder, maybe a second or third one. I'm using these uh, bolts as examples, like jump between these two. And a couple times I had to jump to a third one because those two were going to go off at the same time. If one went off quickly before the other one, I could have tried doing it safely. Like this one goes off and then immediately move to this one and then this one would go off. But that is really risky. It was better idea to just move to this one, which had quite a while to, you know, fire a cannonball. It worked out for me and so did the potions and flasks, definitely. Okay, well, as always, uh, if anyone has a request for a certain class or spec doing a certain fight, or if you want to see a certain fight done sooner than I'm uploading these videos every Sunday and Wednesday, feel free to request so in the comments. Okay, next time I'm doing rank 6, fight 1 and 2. Till then, let me see if I have any new things for sale. No. Well, till next time, be swell, stay well, and farewell.